some of the best road bike designs have and continue to come out of the country that is so in love with La Bicicletta. Italy boasts many of life's good things like pasta, coffee, pizza and my personal favourite, tiramisu. But it is the delights of Colnago, Bianchi, Villa and Pinarello that we'll be focusing on today. Here are five of the dreamiest Italian superbikes, starting with the latest in a long line of classics. While Tade Pogaccia chooses the lightweight Aero V4 RS for road racing duties, Colnago's classic C-Series range continues with the C68. The C-Series have been around since 1989 and has seen eight iterations in the 30-something years since. What's most interesting about Colnago's C-Series bikes is the construction method. Now, the carbon frame uses a lugged design, which is pretty rare these days. The V4 RS and most other road bikes use a monocoque frame, but Colnago is still developing this traditional method. Whereas Colnago used to build its C-Series frames with separate lugs joining each of its individual tubes, the C68's new design is primarily composed of a top tube that runs into the upper part of the head tube, a down tube that includes the main part of the head tube, a seat tube that now incorporates the bottom bracket shell, and then there's the rear triangle. The design allows Colnago to offer tunable stack and reach figures for riders, or if that isn't enough, then you can go for fully customizable geometry, where 3D printed titanium lugs are used instead. As for prices, well, this is unsurprisingly in serious superbike territory, with the full carbon frame priced at €5,650. The carbon slash titanium frame costs €6,600, and complete builds start from €13,260. Whew, pricey. Bianchi's latest Special Isma RC is a bike that I'm very familiar with, having recently reviewed the top spec Dura Ace version, a video of which can be found in the card above somewhere up there. Now, I think that this is a bike that shows that Bianchi won't be stuck in the past making it one to watch. The Special Yzma used to be about skinny tubes and low weight, yet the last two editions have seen it transform into an aero meets lightweight road racer. Many of the tube shapes resemble those of Bianchi's dedicated aero bike, the Ultra RC, but these have been slimmed down and it's clear to see that the intention here is an all-rounder. My eyes are instantly drawn to some of these features, the top tube that flows down and then up, the head tube that hangs awkwardly kind of over the top of the fork. Bianchi also does the design a little differently, splitting down tube decals to include the usual brand name on the drive side, Reparto Course, the name for its racing department is then splashing big letters down the non-drive side. The frame set is constructed, Bianchi says, from high modulus carbon fibre. No details though are given about the frame set's makeup. The outgoing model used a slightly sloping top tube that flowed directly into the seat stays. Now though, the top tube kind of weaves its way to the seat tube, where there is a drop before the angular seat stays connect. There has been plenty of work done on the down tube too, with subtle aero channeling on the upper part of the forks. Finishing the new front end is Bianchi's own Reparto Coarse Carbon Integrated Handlebar. Now, Bianchi claims that this all adds up to a UCI illegal 6.6 kilo bike weight. They do, however, note a plus minus 5% tolerance to account for the range of frame sizes. My 55cm test bike, complete with bottle cages and an out front mount, came in at 6.75 kilos, which is pretty light. So, will Bianchi's latest lightweight race bike prove popular with the masses? I think it's a brilliant bike to ride, honestly, it's fantastic. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. From the ultra-modern to what I'd argue is the prettiest bike available on the market today, the Steel Superleggera is a celebration of Villiers' heritage, combining classic Italian aesthetics with modern technology. But the first thing to catch my eye is that incredible paint. From the 1940s to the 1980s, when steel was real in the racing world, the Ramato finish was a signature feature of Villiers' bikes. To get this polished copper effect, the frame has to be mirror polished and then fully chromed before a translucent paint layer is added. If that sounds complicated, well it is, but in my eyes it is worth the effort. 
The Columbus SL steel frame set is handmade in Italy. It's got a threaded steerer for that authentic old school look, but a threaded bottom bracket for modern compatibility. The modern design continues with a choice of Campagnolo's Centaur, Chorus and Record mechanical group sets. Now you can get the Superleggera as a frame set for your own build, but don't you dare put anything other than Campagnolo on it, or I will find you and I will kill you. Record and Chorus bikes come with Campagnolo's excellent Zonda wheels and 25mm Vittoria Zafiro Pro 4 tyres. Now my suggestion for a truly beautiful build would be to pair a set of Ambrosio's Nemesis rims with Record hubs and Tanwall FMB tubular tyres. Magnifico! And of course this one is only available with rim brakes, as it should be. Weight is hardly the primary concern of this bike, but the Superleggera is still impressively light. Our complete bike in size 58 centimeters as shown weighs 8.92 kilos. I'll say it again, you cannot beat this bike for looks, but do you agree? If you think that modern bikes are nicer to look at, then Villiat has a brilliant option, which I'll come to in just a moment. First though, we need to look at one of the most successful bike models in the world that might be due an upgrade soon. The Dogma F is a fully integrated design with cables almost entirely hidden from view and a one-piece proprietary cockpit that sits on an exceptionally beefy straight 1.5 inch fork steerer. At the back end, the seat stays extend away from the seat tube before heading towards the rear axle rather than taking a direct line. This is all to do with the aerodynamic development Pinarello has carried out and the brand says that while the F12 was already pretty darn aero, the F makes further savings with the disc and rim brake models being 4.8% and 3.2% more aero than their respective predecessors. For the Dogma F disc, this translates to a 1.3 watt saving at 40 km per hour and a 2.6 watt saving at 50 km per hour. Now, while Pinarello is keen to stress that responsiveness and comfort matter more than shaving off a few grams, weight savings do get a lot of attention. After all, weight savings are so deeply embedded in the cycling psyche, they are kind of hard to ignore. Pinarello says the Dogma F Discs frame kit, frame for seat post and cockpit that is, is 265 grams lighter in total with key savings at the seat post, headset and fork. The Dogma F is one of the few top end race bikes that is still available with rim brakes, but whether down to genuine preference for the latest tech or sponsor pressures, the Ineos team made the switch to disc brakes a few years ago and well, they haven't looked back. I almost feel sorry for the bike that ends up under Filippo Garner. The Italian ruler is one of Italy's best riders, but man alive can he put in some power. Imagine how many chains he chews through each year. To deal with pro power like Garner's, Pinarello says that it made the bottom bracket 12% stiffer than on the F12. But seeing as it was launched in 2021, we'd suspect that a new version could be on its way soon. A big question looms over the new bike, however. The current model was still available with rim brakes, but will this choice still be available to you, the consumer, going forward? While Villia has heritage covered, it also has a fabulous race bike in the form of the Falante SLR. But keep an eye on the bike of Mark Cavendish, because this one is another that is due an update. Released in late 2020, the Falante SLR, seen here in the colours of Team Astana, is one of the lightweight aero mould that we see so much of in today's market. A fully integrated front end means that there isn't a cable to be seen and aerodynamic tube shapes can be found throughout. But Villiat never released any specific aero claims when they released the bike, only promising that the bike is very fast in both the wind tunnel and the real world. I guess he'll just have to take their word for it. Should Cavendish get his hands in the air just once more, he'll have surpassed the legendary Eddie Merckx for the all-time number of Tour de France stage victories. Now, what a piece of history that would be for Villiat to be a part of. And if you'd love to see Cav take that final Tour de France win, then hit the like button. I'm sure it will help him. If you really love our videos and you want to help the channel, why not subscribe? Loads of you aren't and it's free, so why not? Thanks for watching and if you want an in-depth review of the Bianchi, then why not check out this video?